Welcome to the Nonprofit Report, your update on nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders. I'm your host, Mark Oppenheim, and today our discussion is with the Association for Place, a network of psychologists, teachers, therapists, and other related professionals. And, the, and we're going to be talking about the essential work they are doing to help Ukrainian children who have been displaced and have found refuge in, in Poland. It's a very interesting topic. And I'd like to introduce Magdalena Wojciechowska, president of the association Your, Your Place. Magda, thank you so much for helping us to understand the great work that you're doing in Poland for Ukrainian refugees. Thank you very much. Likewise, thank you very much for inviting me to this program. So tell us a little bit about the work that you do and the people that you serve, as well as your team. How, how do you assemble that team? Give us an understanding of, uh, of the great things that you are doing to help these Ukrainian children. Uh, our association is not a very old one because we were only established in March 2021. Uh, but for uh, about a half a year before that date, uh, we started thinking together how we could put our skills to a better use, how we could uh, uh, put them together because we had um, quite a range of skills uh, and specializations. Uh, in many cases, there are persons with uh, uh, a dozen years of experience and more. Um, and uh, we wanted to provide, to, to launch an organization that could provide comprehensive help. Plus, if there were uh, areas or persons that we couldn't help uh, because we were missing a, a certain specialization, we would be able then uh, to refer them further. So you mm -hmm. have a team of people who have psychological training and educational training. And, and you started off, I guess, as volunteers. Is that correct? Uh, well, up to up, up until now, uh, most of us are continuing to work for their uh, normal place of employment, whether it be a school or a school for special needs children. Uh, but together we form quite a community because uh, typically uh, there are many children that are often referred from one person to another. If there's a person that needs some additional um, uh, service from a qualified teacher, educator, then the psychologist will send them on. And, and uh, the other way around, a, a, a teacher can refer a child for psychological help. So uh, up until now, uh, we've been working pro bono uh, for the association, uh, but the idea is that we would like to shift our efforts uh, full-time uh, to, to, uh, to work for the, uh, for the association. Well, our compliments, because this idea of just responding to need, it's something that we need in this world. And, and you are embodying that value through your work and of course to sustain it you need to figure out a way to to pay for for time uh, so that everybody can put bread on their own plate as well through these activities but the response is just is just amazing so our compliments so you have these refugees who are coming over people who are displaced you have a lot of children coming over you're responding to that to those needs but in the world today, we also see a response to refugees, which is very um, negative uh, in different countries. We have seen um, in, in, in Hungary and even before this war in Poland, this, this fear of refugees. How do you uh, process this? Because Poland has basically absorbed 10% of its population. Um, and, and it's a huge, huge um, burden how is Poland not responding negatively and seem to be responding in such a productive and positive sense, even though there is such a flood and such stress on the country? Mm. Uh, I think this is this is a bit of a, our national character that we uh, tend to have this emotional reaction uh, to to people in need. Uh, so so it it usually takes up very quick. Uh, what was happening, and uh, so it's like a like a reflex of a of a kind heart. Uh, the the response which is happening, which it is still happening, although a, a little less uh, now, is simply just uh, the, the reaction to people in need. Also, it was such a sudden situation that nobody expected. Hence, the sudden uh, 
um, reaction to it. Could you talk a little bit about the services that you provide and the dimension of the services? How many children are educated in Poland, were educated in Poland before um, this, this rush of refugees and what is the challenge right now? Uh, uh, the, the hard data that we have at the moment is that there were 7,000 Ukrainian children who took the eighth grader exam, which is like the final exam at the end of the elementary school. Uh, basically, there are uh, hundreds of thousands of children which are in one way or another uh, included in the Polish educational systems, but we don't know the exact figures. There are statistics, but uh, we have to remember that there are uh, there's some part of the children that are included formally, but are not using that system, the educational system. But also, there are some children that are using the daily support uh, system, but are not part of the educational system. All we know is that th they constitute a, a very a big um, fraction of the of the children and young people who use the the educational system. You know, it is it, it's amazing. Two point eight million children have been displaced. Some of them are displaced internally in Ukraine. Uh, some are are displaced um, externally, and you are absorbing so many people. And you're also dealing with people who have a different experience than those that you treated before. How are the differences becoming obvious uh, between a child who is displaced from their homeland or who has perhaps witnessed war and the children that you treated previously? Mm. Uh, that work is very difficult. One of the first things is the language barrier. Uh, even if we know uh, some Russians or maybe a little bit of Ukrainian, this is uh, difficult because when we deal, for instance, with psychological assistance, we're really talking in very abstract terms. For instance, psychologists talk uh, uh, about emotions and about feelings. Even in one's uh, mother language, it's very difficult to talk about. Uh, the second thing is that there are significant differences in the um, uh, educational systems, for instance, in the syllabus. Uh, also, uh, there is this, you can compare it to a situation, so a child that suddenly ends up in, a, in an entirely different educational system can be compared to an adult who's thrown into a new job where they don't know the language, they can't read the instruction manual, they don't know what's going to happen, they don't know how things work. This is very stressful. Uh, basically, if the Ukrainian child um, comes to a class which did not have any issues before, usually the adaptation is actually quite quite quick, relatively quick. Uh, when there is a, a class or a group uh, that has had some difficulties in the past, let's say there, there are children, one or more children with learning disabilities, then this adaptation is more difficult and, and there is a more, higher likelihood of emotional issues. So it's especially um, important to work with those uh, children who are new and, and displaced. Um, it would be best if if we could uh, have assistance from Ukrainian psychologists and teachers, because they know um, the types of issues, they know the types of social issues, and they know the types of difficulties um, that are typical for their educational uh, system. They know the Ukrainian syllabus, for instance. And and even the subtleties of, of the schedule that a, that a child experiences in school, the, the rhythms, the patterns, the rituals, also they will be different and the child has to become accustomed in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, that is true. Um, it is also important to remember that uh, the child uh, who, who is displaced and is in Poland is not alone. They came here with their parents or caregivers and uh, uh, we have to look at the whole situation. Oftentimes it's the caregiver that uh, suffered the trauma. And in that case, they're not really in position to provide adequate support to the child. So it would be best uh, to have an organization that provides comprehensive assistance to include um, the uh, parent or caregiver and also realize that there is an issue and then help the child. That's such a great observation. You have to have a holistic uh, approach, but I'd like to ask you also about the, the your people who are volunteering uh, 
um, how this is affecting them because the person who is treating somebody who is traumatized are also themselves traumatized and they also need support of the community. How do you ensure that the energy stays up and stays positive, that people don't get exhausted as they are trying their best to help those who are traumatized, that they are not traumatized themselves? Uh, at, at the association, uh, our, we have a psychologist that provides assistance to, to the uh, volunteers on open door. This is an open door policy, so, so they can come to visit any time. Uh, to 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 seek help but also to talk just to talk on top of that we support one another we have uh, weekly meetings on wednesdays uh, when we basically um, talk about current issues but uh, this is always open to discussing problems uh, and difficulties uh, so these meetings also serve as a way uh, to provide support to one another um, we form a, a community and and we care about one another uh, but we don't necessarily know one another that well not everybody knows everybody so there is uh, the need for a network and uh, if uh, if something comes up uh, one person could encourage another to to either attend a workshop or uh, meet a psychologist or myself because even though i'm not a psychologist myself i um uh, play a role of the person uh, who tries to uplift everybody. Well, as, as we each try to change the world, right, we are acquiring new skills and we're finding within ourselves capabilities that might not have a label, might not have a pedigree, might not have a degree, but in a sense, we can all take our own human empathy, our own human heart, and we can share that with, with someone else and we can become healers ourselves. It seems that that is what you are doing. This is an we are an association of people who uh, have this in them of, of always uh, learning and gaining new experiences. We, we keep developing all our lives and, and training. I myself do that. I keep learning. I keep attending trainings. But generally, uh, we can say that we are such a bunch psychologists, uh, teachers, uh, we we uh, we learn to keep ourselves motivated. So um, the, the way it works for us is that very easy, it's very quick to apply what we learn. So we learn, we apply, we observe. Uh, and basically talking about observing things, this whole thing, this whole initiative really started with us observing the situation. We decided that things were not ideal, we could help, we could change, uh, we could do something good. And uh, as we uh, develop this work, we see that perhaps there's a need to create something new, to develop a new plan for a more large scale action because what we do is we provided fragmented bits uh, on the in the areas of psychology education medicine it would be nice to have a comprehensive plan for these so um as as you started this service you drew from your own experiences and you also responded to human need but to sustain this you have to at a certain point figure out a way to professionalize it and particularly uh, earn an income in doing it. Talk about the needs that you have currently and, and where you see this going in the future so that uh, we can all help you to transition to that more professional stance that you indicated previously was desired. Uh, well, the the what we would like to change uh, or improve is to increase the number of specialized specializations or specialists that we have, uh, especially in those areas where uh, free of charge uh, support is not available or difficult uh, to, to get. For instance, uh, some things that are not easy to acquire under the uh, National Health Fund or uh, within the educational system. One of such areas is psychiatry. Uh, and we would like to create a location uh, which would be a point for comprehensive assistance. Uh, we, um, we, this would be a place where 
uh, the assistance would begin and go throughout its course until completion. So uh, we know that each action that we do it means that we want more. Uh, we work with children from Ukraine. We have good results. Kids are happy. Parents come to see us. And we think that it, what would be necessary at the end of the day would be to create physical locations. Because at the moment, what happens is that we go to them. So we go to places where uh, there are a lot of um, refugees, for instance, the reception points. Um, but as these disperse, uh, uh, we, we would want to have a place where they can go. Uh, so, uh, especially when somebody needs a diagnosis. Mm, so, uh, what we're, we have quite a lot of people that come and want to work for us. Uh, and But a lot of them would like to work for us uh, as a job. So that's where there would be a financial need because we, we will have volunteers and there will be some work that will be done uh, by volunteers. But but uh, the more we work, the more needs we see that need to be fulfilled. So uh, if we had some financial support, we would probably want to develop just that, the locations uh, which would provide comprehensive assistance, starting with Warsaw, because this is where we are based, and then other large cities. So part of what you're arguing for is that in addition to thinking about this, in terms of materiel, whether it's materiel that helps the Ukrainians uh, retain their country, meaning um, in this particular case, weapons of various sorts or logistics, cars, trucks, and so on and so forth. What you're talking about is support of people, which is not usually associated with a, a struggle, but absolutely should be. So there is an investment that's required, there is money that is required to meet the human need. And that's something that we really all can do, and we can all talk about. So as you're, as you're thinking about this, let's talk about the transformations that you'd like to, uh, to uh, take next. I'll, I'll ask the next part of the question in, in a second, Jan. So you mentioned mm -hmm. a couple of needs. The first need that you mentioned was some sort of an intake center some sort of a physical uh, facility that where, where your people can gather, where you can receive those needing treatment. Is that going to be the most effective way, given the fact, as you also said, people are dispersed, so they won't necessarily be concentrated? Um, is, it, is it a combination of things so that you know, in a center like Warsaw, there might be a physical location, but then in other places where people are more dispersed, you have a, a, another model for, for treatment that does not require a physical center. Um, so the first part of my answer is this. Yes, I, I, I do agree. Yes, that's true. Uh, well, the basic uh, assistance needs to pro be provided wherever those persons are. But here we're talking about roof over their heads and, and uh, the daily things, the clothes also help uh, send to Ukraine, uh, uh, including logistics. But the uh, important thing is that uh, psychological uh, trauma is something that um, it does not have to be manifested immediately. Sometimes it manifests itself after some time. And uh, uh, in addition to that, um, so we can have a person who's doing fine somewhere and suddenly their condition deteriorates. Also, we have to remember that uh, even if uh, the even if the situation in Ukraine is resolved and uh, uh, a lot of people go back, uh, some of them will stay, perhaps some of them will stay forever. So we have to keep in mind that we need a permanent um, way of looking after them. Uh, but there is more. Uh, the second, as to the second part of what you said, uh, at the moment, uh, it is a good idea to focus on big cities because they are, there are the largest groupings of refugees there. Uh, but the, 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 one of the tasks of those centers would be to develop a method because we, uh, we are new to all this. We never had so many refugees. We are learning how to cope with it. We don't have a methodology. We don't have a system. We could develop certain paradigms, uh, templates, the ways to, to deal with various types of issues. And uh, one of the roles of those centers would be to teach people who would then go to the smaller centers and uh, 
spread uh, the best practices. Uh, so uh, uh, they would go to the smaller towns and uh, that way we could also um, test those systems and get feedback from there because I think this may be, there may be differences in how uh, integration goes in big cities and how integration goes in small towns. Uh, so we need to have that. So um, this this would be a, a way to disperse, as it were, uh, the, the assistance, keeping in mind that often in the small towns, certain specializations, certain types of assistance are not available at all at the moment. And is technology Technology enabling that kind of, of support to dispersed uh, people, is that part of your plan as well? Poland, of course, has some great technological capabilities and you have a huge and, ver and very vital um, technology sector. Is that part of your picture? Uh, yes, that, that, is, that is true. Once we have a plan, uh, technology would provide support for its dissemination, for its uh, uh, communication. There are existing systems that support such uh, activities. There are uh, various types of platforms for all kinds of purposes that are being created right now, for instance, platforms that match people who are looking for the jobs with people who are looking for uh, persons to employ. There are such platforms for people who are looking for transport and people who are offering transport. And this is uh, this is good and uh, this sort of uh, uh, global synchronization of efforts that technology allows will not solve our problems but will definitely support uh, finding a solution uh, so uh, um, we could uh, uh, we also would uh, technology could also be used to communicate with other centers because we are probably not communicating as well as we could or we should and uh, uh, there are other areas where people are facing similar problems to us and probably finding their own solutions. This is where technology could also help. Often you have people who are not part of the vast majority who are left behind in times like these. So let's, let's continue to talk a little bit more about uh, the kind of special needs that you deal with. And you had uh, talked before the show a little bit uh, before we started recording a little bit about people who are on the spectrum of autism and other conditions. Uh, could you could you just describe the range of special needs that you're dealing with and also the competencies that you bring to the table in order to help those people with those special needs? Mm -hmm. um, uh, the children with special needs, but in particular, uh, children with um, either uh, difficulties in adapting or children on the um, uh, autism spectrum, uh, their main problem is that they find it difficult to cope with change. And uh, the way uh, usually uh, they, they're treated is that they're taught routines and they're used to things not changing. Suddenly they're in a situation where they're completely uprooted and uh, this uh, causes a problem for the child, this causes the problem for the caregiver, but it also can cause difficulties for the other children in, in, in the group, in the class. So uh, we, what we uh, also, uh, the point, there's a point of difficulty here because of the refugee situation. They often left home without any medical documentation. So anything that we can learn is from uh, talking to the child, observing the child, talking to the caregiver. Uh, based on that, uh, we can then um, provide advice and assistance. We can, for instance, explain to the caregiver uh, how uh, they can help the child, but also we can uh, help the caregiver to uh, go uh, to uh, provide advice of how they can get assistance from the system. Uh, because it's a system they don't know and uh, we, we tell them what's available. Also, uh, if we can't cope with the situation, we can provide referral and uh, together we can look for solutions. How do you deal with the linguistic problems? In this particular case, we have the, uh, the services of Yuyan as a translator. How do you deal with that? Because uh, I'm sure that there are people who are bilingual, but certainly not enough given the need. 
Uh, for we luckily have quite a lot of volunteers who uh, are from Ukraine and spent a lot of time in in Poland. So uh, we we try to make sure that uh, when there is something more difficult, uh, like a conversation with a psychologist, that there is a voluntary. Uh, but uh, for simple daily things, uh, uh, we we do it with uh, our own resources. We use a translator. I quickly acted, asked this does it mean technology yes we use google translate uh, uh, in many cases where we can't uh, have um, a volunteer what would be best is to have like a permanent full-time translator that we could uh, always use uh, but for other other things when we can't get a uh, an Volunteer, volunteer uh, who is uh, bilingual or, or close to bilingual, uh, then when we use technology, uh, if it's something simple, if it's a simple poster, uh, also we had we needed to translate uh, the um, personal data uh, law uh, into Ukrainian, and the way we did that is is we ran it through Google Translate, and then we asked uh, a person to correct it, and it turned out that their machine translation was actually better than it used to be. Uh, so it required some corrections, but these things improve. Uh, however, um, there are certain areas where we would really uh, need a professional interpreter. Uh, there, especially somebody who knows Polish very good, very well, because uh, uh, for a discussion, uh, uh, psychological therapy, uh, yeah, we, that would help. Is there one, any final point that you would like to make that I have not been smart enough to ask? Uh, I, I think that well, that it's just that we could talk for a, for a very long time about uh, uh, educations, educators, psychologists, uh, especially because what we are facing is new to us, and there is a lot to say. But there's just one thing: is that uh, we should probably uh, pay more attention to children, people of special needs, because this was actually what we did before uh, the refugee crisis. And uh, uh, when we think about the refugees who come here, uh, they did not only have to leave the things uh, behind, their homes behind, but often they have some difficulties and they brought them with them. So what happens is that uh, uh, there were perhaps some among the many children who came, some children who had special needs back in Ukraine and uh, uh, maybe they were in therapy maybe that therapy was interrupted and uh, if so there is likely to be some uh, regression in in their condition so this is uh, this is where we need to uh, perhaps it's not uh, publicized enough that uh, in addition to the very urgent needs that have to be met there are also those needs uh, that that uh, people who come are of all kinds and they include those that need that need extra help the president of the association your place a group of volunteers who have educators psychologists who are treating uh, so many ukrainian uh, refugees and those are displaced who are helping children with special needs uh, try to integrate and adopt. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. And please thank your volunteers, your staffs, your colleagues, and, and uh, your, even your clients and, and your other supporters. You are doing our work in this world and, and we very much are, are, are benefiting from it. Thank you so much. Bardzo dziękuję również. Thank you very much for the meeting. Thank you. Have a great day. Take care.